there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another Backman Locomotive review. So today's the day, today is the first review I'm going to be filming uh, with all of the new lighting that I put in uh, back on that Monday video I put up. Uh, since then I actually bought more of the strips and uh, put them up, I couldn't resist to be honest, they were so good and I just thought if I leave it a couple of months I'm probably not even going to be able to get the, the same strips and then I'm going to be in the same position again mixing different uh, colour temperatures and things. So I've managed to do it and I'm really happy with the results so bear with me, it is going to be different on the camera obviously because it's a lot brighter in here now but I'm going to do my best. But uh, anyway enough about the lighting because I talked enough about that back on Monday. Today I'm going to be looking at another Backman Loco as I already said and it is this one, the G2A. Now this is a very popular Loco, everybody seems to like the G2A and I actually did review this once before but it was a long time ago, many years ago, about three years ago I would say. Uh, the review isn't even on YouTube anymore because it really wasn't very good and it was hardly even a review, it was more of a, a showcase so I thought it was high time I did another review of the G2A and it's a really really unusual looking class of locomotive. It's an 08 tender engine which is quite unusual uh, I think it's only the Raven Q6 that also has that wheel configuration in my collection so yes very unusual and also uh, a very lovely engine so let's get this out and let's see what she's like so yes, there she is just through the window of the packaging there. You can just about see her, although of course there is a bit of uh, glare going on there. So I won't spend too long looking at the box and things. But first of all, here is the end of the box then. And as you can see, this is product code 31-477DC, uh, class G2A 49361. That is the running number, I believe. BR Black Lake Crest with tender back cab. Yes, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. And as it says, yes, DCC on board. And you can also see the price on there too, £99.50. Uh, from Rails of Sheffield, I believe this was, uh, back in 2015, of course, but to me, that sounds like a pretty good price, so I really was quite happy with this at the time. Anyway, very briefly, I will show you the back of the box. As you can see, there is a brief history of the G2A. There's not too much really known about them, even if you look online. It is quite difficult to find information on them, and you'll notice if you read the Backman history here, it's a little bit uh, vague. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the way it is. Uh, there's not too much out there about them, really. But uh, I'll do my best later on and give you a little bit of history. But uh, for now then, let's get this one out. Uh, as I say, it's really unusual, so I hope you're going to enjoy seeing her today. Uh, just uh, grab the outer sleeve then. And if I remember correctly, if I just take out the block of ice, there's uh, quite a bit of stuff in here from Rails of Sheffield. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's one of the Rails of Sheffield uh, slips. I obviously bought this from eBay. Like I said, I bought this in 2015, so it's quite a long time ago now. Uh, anyway, I'll grab some of the paperwork. So that's just a collector's club uh, piece of paper. I won't bother looking at that. Uh, then we've got a couple of bits here. Uh, I think that's just a bit about... Uh, guarantee and how to care for your locomotive so I won't look at that too much but here's the interesting one here you've got um, a little bit of a data sheet here uh, first of all on the back here or the front I'm not sure which is the front or the back you've got the exploded diagram which as usual is just a diagram of all the different parts uh, so that you can clearly see how it all goes together and also a list of parts just in case you ever need to order some uh, spare ones if anything goes wrong or anything like that so that's fine and then on the other side you've got uh, the usual sort of running tips and uh, just general uh, hints and tips really Really talks about body removal, the fitting DCC, DCC sound, lubrication. Yep, all the usual stuff. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at that because I think we all pretty much know the drill now. But uh, right, anyway, let's grab out the G2A then. And uh, there is a detail pack here, but I think I've opened it up in the past or somebody has. Uh, but still inside there is uh, what look like guard irons, but I don't know if they're going to be. Um, I don't even know if the LMS had guard irons, but uh, that's kind of what they look like. And then there's also a couple of vacuum pipes in there. I think also there would have been a coupling for the front perhaps, but that's already been fitted. And of course there would have been brake reading as well, which I think has already been fitted too. But uh, yeah, fair enough, that is the detail pack. And if I get the Loco out now, you're going to be able to see. Uh, now the Loco and Tender obviously are connected here, so I've got to lift them out together. 
There we go, just move the block of ice out the way, and very, very impressively, here she is. And uh, yes, she really is an unusual looking thing. It almost looks like there should be a front truck or something like that on the front there. But uh, no, she is a, an 080, and it's really unusual. Uh, but yeah, really quite attractive too, I think. And as you can tell by the tender, there is a bit of covering for the cab there, uh, which is specific to this tender. There were versions, I don't know if Backman have covered them, but of course in real life there were versions which had uh, an uncovered cab and no race section on the tender there. But no, not this one, and I quite like that actually. Again, it's quite unusual, which I really like. So there she is then, the G28 in a BR Black, of course, although I think Backman have done some LMS versions as well. But uh, anyway, here's a little bit more history on the G28 then, and once I've gotten through that, I will show you her close up because this one really is uh, quite an impressive piece of kit. So, the G2A were one of many powerful classes of 080 locomotives designed for the LNWR, and they were a development of the earlier G1 class, which were built around the turn of the 20th century. The class was designed by Charles Bowen Cook, and 327 examples existed in total, all of which were rebuilt from the G1 design. The class survived for many years, actually, and 320 of them survived well into the BR era, uh, which is the vast majority of the original class, of course. Now, sadly, none of the G2A were actually preserved, but a G2 has been, which looks very similar actually, just looking at them, and I think they've still got the nickname Super D as well, uh, but it's not actually identical technically speaking. So there she is then up against the white background, the G2A or the Super D as they're also known. And generally, yes, it's a really good quality and a really well detailed model. Now she weighs quite a lot. The, the weight isn't absolutely incredible, but there is a good amount of weight there. And I think the key reason for that is the fact that there is a lot of metal work on this model. So obviously, yeah, the chassis for the mechanism and everything is made of metal, but also you've got this running board, uh, which goes along the whole length of the logo, really. Uh, it's all made out of metal, which makes the model look and also feel a lot more realistic and obviously as I said it gives it that weight as well so that's fantastic but other than that outwardly it is quite a simple looking model and obviously that's not a criticism of Backman it's just the way the prototype was for example as freight locomotives these never had extravagant liveries so you're not going to be expecting to see lining or you know extravagant paintwork on a model and also of course you've got all of the uh, the valve gear and the cylinders and everything between the frames out of sight which means obviously they're not represented on the model because you wouldn't be able to see them. So yeah, quite a simple model in that sense, but then again the price I paid, I'm not too sure about the RRP, but certainly my price of £100 DCC fitted seems to be pretty much spot on, you know, uh, for a good quality model. Like I said, it is quality, there's a lot of metal on there, and the detail is pretty good as I'm going to show you now. So let's take a look at what painted detail there is. On the side of the cab you've got the 7F classification there, and obviously the running number 49361 there, as we saw on the box. And then on the smoke box door, you've also got the shed code printed on there as per the BR livery, uh, again, which is uh, another painted detail. And then obviously down on the buffer beam, that is all painted red there, as you can see. And while we're looking at the buffer beam, I might as well show you that, yes, the buffers are sprung on these. And another really nice feature I noticed is the front coupling. As you can see, it's pretty basic looking, but as you can see, it is, I don't know if articulated is the right word, but it is sort of sprung so that it can uh, move left and right. And obviously the Loco has quite a large wheelbase. Uh, it's quite a long Loco with no trucks or ponies or uh, you know bogies to speak of so it's quite important really that that coupling is free to move and that's really quite a nice bit of design there from Backman. But anyway back to the subject of paintwork that is pretty much it for the Loco except of course for the cab which I will show you. Now the cab detail isn't absolutely exquisite but it really is pretty good uh, as you can see every component there is picked out with the paint you can clearly see the regulator and some of the pipework there. Noticeably there isn't any detail on the gauges or anything like that which is something that the uh, truly top of the range models do have but that's not much of a criticism because the cab does look pretty good. On the subject of the detail then specifically the separately fitted parts you can see up on top of the cab here you've got a really nice uh, finely molded whistle here which I think is a die cast piece which is nice to see and then just beyond there as you can also see you've got a couple of safety valves which I think too are made of metal and just looking at the front of the cab there you've got very very tiny windows but those are glazed which is again quite a nice touch and quite a little bit of fine detailing there. There's plenty of pipe work on the Loco, as you can see uh, just behind this handrail here you've got a pipe which goes across the length of the thing and you can also see you've got a couple of presumably separately fitted pipes here just uh, going round underneath the boiler there. 
On top of that, you've also got the separately fitted reversing rod here. It's not too clear whether that's made of plastic or metal, but it has been blacked out, so it could be plastic, it could be metal, I'm not too sure. And then looking underneath the boiler, you can see that there isn't any representation of the valve gear. Now, I've never seen the preserved G1, oh, I think it's a G2, isn't it, in real life, so I don't know how much of the valve gear would be visible under there, but regardless, that's not something represented on the model. As you can see, it is just a sort of a plain uh, metal area under there. And on Backman's later models, that isn't the case. They tend to represent the valve gear there, but not in this case. Anyway, around the front, as you can see, we have got lamp irons fitted there, and also the smoke box door does open. Let me just show you that. It's quite an interesting feature, this. Now, this one does have trouble staying shut, so you might notice I've got a bit of blue tack on there just to, to make sure it doesn't uh, work itself open while it's running. But nonetheless, that is a really, really nice feature. And there are handrails and steps and things all over the model, as you'd normally expect, but uh, here's a little montage of them just so that you can see. Uh, the detail really is pretty good for what is outwardly quite a basic model. Okay, let's take a look at the tender then, and as you know, the tender is quite unusual on this uh, because you've got this uh, covered area here, which I suppose is designed to shield the crew a little bit. As I say, there were variants in real life which didn't have that feature. I can't really picture what the tender looked like if it didn't have that uh, cover on it. But uh, anyway, regardless, that's what this one's got. And as you can see on the back there, you've got those grilled windows. Uh, quite a nice effect there. But of course, behind that grilling, you have got the glazing too, which is, uh, again, quite a nice detailed touch. The coal on this tender is relatively realistic looking. As you can see, it's got quite a glossy texture to it, which is pretty common from Backman. But nonetheless, it looks the part, and I suppose it is removable. Yes, I think it is removable. Uh, I seem to remember that, which is good because if you don't like that glossy coal, it means you can just get rid of it and put your own in uh, and you can choose whatever material you like. And as you can also see, the top of the tender has quite a lot of separately fitted detail there, which is nice to see. As you can see on the side, there's not much to see really, but there is a lot of fine rivet work going on there, which you have to get really, really close up uh, to appreciate. But obviously you do have the late BR crest there, which is nice to see. And while we're here, I will show you the underframe because it really is quite a nicely detailed underframe there, as you can see. Uh, I assume this is brake rigging here, which again is quite nice and realistic looking and obviously all of the axle boxes and uh, the springs and things are really nicely detailed. And around the back, once again, you can see more lamp irons there. You've got little footholds, uh, presumably for crew wanting to climb up the tender. And then also you've got more sprung buffers and a little coupling hook fitted there uh, on the middle of the buffer beam. So as you can clearly tell, a really nicely detailed loco, despite being quite a, a basic thing, even in real life, at least to look at. So yeah, despite all of that, the detail is pretty impressive actually. Uh, it's a few years old now, so it's not absolutely super, super modern, but it does the trick and it really is an attractive thing, I think. Uh, although I am sure some people might find this a little bit weird looking, but that's fine too. I like weird. Anyway, let's get her down onto the track then and we will see how she runs. Let's give it a try. So there she is then, the G28 down onto the track, and I've got to say, even though she's unusual and even though she's very unorthodox looking, I've got to say I find them so attractive. Yeah, somehow she's still got that charm. I don't know how, but uh, in my opinion, she really, really does. And I'm a big fan of the G2A. Anyway, she's about to be coupling up to my Ocean of Ocean Wagons. And as you can see there, there's quite a lot of them. So that ought to be a good test of her pulling abilities. But for now then, let's get her tested on the track. I will talk a little bit about her performance. Now, in practice, she's actually a really, really good solid runner. But on paper, there's a few things about the mechanism that isn't great. Uh, first of all, although there are wires going to the tender there are no tender pickups which mean uh, she's only got pickups on the loco wheels uh, which means that you know reliability might be an issue you might find that you're having to clean the wheels more often than you would with an engine that does have tender pickups and on top of that there is one blind axle on the loco uh, which means that it doesn't have uh, flanges uh, I don't know which one it is now it's either uh, this one or this one, not too sure, but that one also doesn't have a pickup to it, so you've actually only got three pickups uh, going to each line, which may, you know, cause a problem. Now, my locos are serviced regularly, but uh, if you don't service your locos perhaps as regularly as I do, you might find that these start to run badly uh, if you haven't cleaned the wheels for, a, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever. But uh, anyway, let's give this a try. Uh, as I say, on, in practice, she's very, very good. So I'm just going to turn her up now and we'll show you uh, her slow speed. I'm turning her up, turning her up, and still turning her up. And as you can see, she is just creeping forwards there. And uh, yeah, you can tell what a good performance that is. I mean, that is unbelievably slow, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't even look like she's moving. And uh, when a loco doesn't look like it's moving, then you know 
uh, that she's got a real good slow speed to her. So that's that. The slow speed's fantastic. I'm just going to roll her forwards now over the express point, and we'll see if she does cut out on there. But generally, she doesn't tend to. She's actually pretty good and reliable. But, yep, as you can see, yeah, no problem. But again, I would be more confident if she did have tender pickups, and certainly for the price, I think the Backman RRP is £124.90, something like that. So it is expensive. There's no excuse, really, to be missing out key features like that. But uh, as it stands, it really doesn't seem to affect her too badly, but it would have been nice to have it there. But uh, as I say, I can't complain. Look at that. And she's quite quiet as well, pretty smooth. I don't think there are any proper bearings in the chassis, as far as I remember. They are just sitting straight on the Mazak, which, again, is a little bit cheap and nasty for an expensive loco. But once again, what can you say, really, because she does run fine. Uh, it just might mean that she'll wear out quick, more quickly than, uh, say, a Hornby one. But it is what it is. OK, let's see her pulling power, then. And uh, uh, like I say, the pulling power on this is really quite impressive. OK, steadily does it. Let me slow her down just before the coupling. There we go. And I'll keep her rolling back into the shot. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the pulling power is immense. I've been testing the pulling power. And you wouldn't believe the kind of load she'll haul um, without wheel slipping. So here we go with the ocean wagons. And uh, this isn't a particularly long train. I think it's about 20... 20 pieces, something like that, so not huge, but most of these wagons, in fact all of them are pretty old, you know, 20, 30 years old, they've got a lot of drag to them, and as you would have seen there when she, uh, when she started moving, no wheel slip, I mean really, it is impressive, so great pulling power, great performance all around really, very impressive. So I thought I would stick with the goods train themes today, so uh, here we come with the second loco on the middle line. And as she gets closer, you'll tell that this is the 7F from the S and DJR. So not quite the LMS, but uh, same kind of region anyway. Uh, so here she comes past you now with uh, also some goods, uh, some of the uh, box vans and things. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing those. And then over on the very inside line, yet another goods loco. This one is pulling tender first, and this is another Backman. Yet another Backman. Uh, it's a 4F with some LMS milk vans. So see which other locos you can spot out on the line. They all have the uh, the freight or goods train theme, except one. There is an imposter, so see if you can figure out which one that is. And enjoy the running session. Okay, let's get started. So there she goes, the G2A. And as I was saying earlier, yeah, they're, they're very popular. Uh, people always seem to love these. And I can see why. You know, two, uh, no, not a 280. 080s are quite unusual, especially in uh, tender locos. And uh, yeah, I think it's probably that. I mean, I always love unusual locos, so I suppose other people do as well. But yeah, I've always been a huge fan. Ever since I saw that one for sale, I, uh, I was a big fan. And uh, I guess that's why I've got one now. Here comes the 4F. This is the Backman 4F, of course. Really lovely model as well. Pulling, again, some pretty old-fashioned rolling stock here. But uh, she's managing that without a problem, which is really lovely. And there goes the Super D again. Uh, the ones that you can get from Backman at the moment are the LMS version and the BR Black weathered version. So, quite a nice choice there. Uh, I suppose if I was buying one today, I'd probably go with the LMS version. But it's still black, of course. So here we go then with my ratings for the Backman G2A. First of all, detail 4 out of 5. As you could clearly see, the detail was fantastic and she really is a beautiful model. However, there are models out there, for example, that do have better cabs and do have the uh, representation of the valve gear between the frames. So I've deducted a mark just for that, but otherwise the detail is pretty good. Power also, as I've already mentioned, she's pretty heavy and she is an 080, so you're going to expect good power. But uh, actually the power goes <laughs> way beyond what you'd expect. Uh, you can put massive loads onto her and she won't wheel slip so really really impressed by that slow speed four out of five the slow speed is actually pretty good as well uh, I would have given the slow speed itself five out of five but I wanted to knock off a mark for the fact that she doesn't have any tender pickups which I think is a massive downside she's actually only got the pickup capabilities of a Jinty which is unnecessary so I've knocked off a point there and similarly the quality is pretty good as well everything's really really sturdy but again no proper bearings in the chassis mean that the quality really isn't well it isn't capable of getting five out of five in my opinion so I've given it four Value then, as I said, I got mine DCC fitted for £100, which is a bargain, but the RRP for these DC is £124.95 from Backman. 
which is very steep, don't get me wrong, but there are worse Backman prices than that. And obviously at Hatton's or Wales or Sheffield or whatever, you will be able to get that quite a bit cheaper. So I've given it four out of five there. It's not too bad, especially if you don't get it from Backman. You know, you can get a fairly good deal there. Overall then, that is 8.26 out of 10, a very fair score. Let's put that into the rankings then. There it is, 10th, just above the Hornby G83 and below the Backman Crab. Once again, it's another loco that's got great presence on the track. Yeah. I'll have to try with a passenger train next time, now that would be pretty unusual. Now I've never seen the G2 that's preserved, but I would love to, because obviously they are really smart looking. Uh, they're neat and tidy looking as well, because obviously all the valve gear is hidden from view, so... I know what I mean. No clutter on the outside of the loco, it's all uh, hidden away nice and tidy. Having said that though, equally it is lovely to see the valve gear outside of the frames as, uh, as with that one in the background there from time to time but I think a little bit of everything is what I prefer but certainly the G2A is uh, a nice neat and tidy one for sure. Okay then folks, well that is the end of today's video, it's been really really good fun to revisit the G2A so I hope you enjoyed seeing that as well. If you did like the review please feel free to leave it a like or even a comment down below because I do love to hear from you and as always any feedback you've got would be really handy for me so uh, yeah don't hold back on the comments. But for now folks that's all I've got to say so once again thank you for your company, uh, feel free to check out my Facebook and Twitter pages, the links for those are down below. And from me, that's all I've got to say today, so thank you once again for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.